So now we'll look at that, uh, the calculations that are involved in that. But before we get to that, let us look at the power triangle, right? Let us look at the power triangle. Do something like this. Obviously, for the power factor to be poor, it means I must have a little power factor ratio. So it means now my S will be somewhere like that, and my Q will be something like that. And this year, the only data will give you. So we know that this represents what? The 2 power ratio, which is represented in kilo watts ratio. So this represents P, and this represents your S, which is your apparent power, which is given in KVA ratio. Then we know that this represents Q, which is your reactive power, and it's in KVA reactive, like that. Né? So these are the three different types of powers that we'll be looking at, right? And then we'll look in detail how these affect our consumption of electricity in yeah? in any uh, connection, right? This every data here, if we take the cos, so the power vector Pm is always equal to the cos of beta for the cos of that particular angle data there. Yeah? Now, if you look at this, we say a good power factor is one angel unit, then we have a perfect power factor. But if we have anything less than one, because one thing between zero and one, the value between zero and one, anything less than one will give you a bad power factor. And we want to try and do that, like we want to try and improve that. So we know the different types of power, and we know the different types of uh, power factor that we have to look at. So I'm saying, by definition, power factor is the ratio PM is equal to cos theta, or it's also referred to as the ratio between or the ratio of the two power to the apparent power. So power factor is also equal to P which is the true power divided by S energy. So this gives you the power factor. So, and then we've got other effects, like the detrimental effect of a poor power factor. The detrimental effects of a poor power factor. Why are we so concerned about power factor? Why, why are we concerned about power factor and doing this power factor collection? Why? They say a poor power factor poses an environmental hazard due to increased power consumption, right? When you start with the calculation, you will see how that happens. Then secondly, and you must know this is important, yeah? they might ask you the exemplative name for detrimental effects of a poor power factor. So you can mark that as important. Right. The, the consumer pays more for maximum demand charge. So it means in the section also then how electricity is being built. How much you pay for electricity, we'll look at it today, man. And how the building actually works. Uh, so if you've got a poor power factor as a customer, you end up paying more on the maximum demand. Then there's also increased voltage drop due to increased current for the load. Right? Which is obviously, if we have a plant, the poor power factor will shorten the lifespan of that particular plant and it also limits the generators and transformers. So one of the problems that ESCOM is currently having, you can say, maybe their loads are having a poor power factor and their plant is always failing. Now we're on stage 6 and 5, you know, because their plants are failing. Now, so let us look at the financial implications. One of the detrimental effects I said the consumer pays more for maximum demand. So that's a financial implication. If you do not collect the power factor, you end up paying more. So we look at power factor collection correct, uh, and also uh, how we can reduce the uh, demand. But 
how is your history built? This way. We've got two types of things there. We've got what is called a domestic consumer bill. Right? Domestic consumer bill. So basically, what they do is that they charge you pay the tariff that comes from the energy regulator in the country, you know, NASA, NASA, the National Energy Regulator. The guys who decide the price of electricity. Right? <coughs> so the regulator will come and say, okay, uh, the price per kilowatt is 125 cents or something like that. What's the current price? Or in case I need to put that in <laughs> right, so now, so the amount payable, so the total amount of say A, the total amount payable is always equal to X multiplied by the kilowatt hours. It's X multiplied by the kilowatt hours, where the value of X is the electricity charge. By charge, I'm not talking about electrical charge, I'm just talking about the money that you pay. So the regulator will tell you, okay, for this area, one kilowatt hour, I will send them, I will send it to you for 100 or for 180 or for 200. Uh, or 200 uh, kilowatt hour. Now, if I'm looking at the charge, I can see the units here. It's kilowatt, basically, the hours is just depending on the time, how much time it is. But I can see that the unit is kilowatt. If I go back to my power time, I see that, okay, so how much kilowatts I use or I consume in my system per month will determine how much I'm paying for electricity. Understand this is what's going to be now. Then we got the second one, so this was one, and we got the second one, and the second one is now talking to industries or industrial consumer benefit. We call it the industrial consumer benefit. Right. Now, the industrial consumer building has two components. From this charge, they will take two components. They charge them for something called a maximum demand, where now they consider the value of your apparent power and also the value of your true power. So, the amount paid, I will just call it A, P, which refers to the amount payable. The amount of which is then equal to x multiplied by the kilowatt hours plus y multiplied by the kilo kVA then kVA then. So if you look at this again, x and y, these two values are basically the electricity charge that will come from the regulator. Right? The regulator will tell you it's okay for the maximum demand. And I'm saying to you, if you look at this section of this uh, amount, the, the KDA is talking to the maximum demand. In other places, in other books, they call it the MMT, the maximum demand. So the Y and the X will be given to you, but the KDA and the kilowatts are going to be coming from your consumption. Right? Are going to be coming from your consumption. So this is just a basic introduction of that. And then they say that by definition, maximum demand is the highest average power in kilowatt amperes in KDA drawn by the industrial consumer over a specific time. Right? So, this KVA is the, the amount of kilowatts and voltage and PS that's drawn by your industrial load for a specific amount of time.
Right, so if we get this and this, then we can be able to calculate. But if I will just ask, Mount uh, Weda, how can I reduce this value? Yeah, yes. How can I reduce this value? Yes. Because you can see the P, I can't reduce it. Right? So this person to pay this money it means already I have to reduce the value of the assumption. So how do I reduce it? I reduce the value by reducing the angle data there, the power factor angle, and that is power of calculation. So the net calculation is that we'll be doing, we'll be uh, looking into that. I would like us to just make two examples and then we'll continue with.